Good morning. I welcome you on behalf of Public Administration School of Social Sciences, Indira Gandhi National Open University. The topic of the day is Public Administration During Crisis. To my way of looking, it is uh, probably one of the most uh, talked of topic for discussion during the present days. Otherwise also, when we attempt to look at it as student of public administration, we definitely are aware of the fact that public administration is government in action and undoubtedly the backbone of uh, government. When we say that it is the government in action or the undoubtedly the backbone of the government, what do we mean by it and what is the modus operandi which has to be looked upon for this particular aspect? It is a structured process to pursue principles of good administration. Why, why do we talk of government, administration, what do we get out of it and when we try to understand, let us try to understand it first and then we will try to look at it that how public administration is during the crisis administration or what is the significance of public administration during the crisis administration. Primarily when we look at it we find that there are four components whereby we can understand about public administration. Let us spend a bit of time on to it so that we can appreciate the, 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 the rationale for today's talk. Public administration is seen as a government institution or it is seen as something which is to do in practice whatever is required to be done up by the government. Whether it is the policy with regard to the economy, policy with regard to the social components, policy with regard to the welfare of certain aspects, policy with regard to the relationship of the government so far as the other countries or nations is concerned. So this is an instrument or, or this is a government institution. Then public administration is an instrument for development and change. Why do we say it is an instrument for development of change and development and change because everything has been kept at the behest of public administration. Each and everything which is required to be undertaken in a given political system that is to be put into practice by the public administration. So there lies the significance of public administration. We say that public administration is an instrument of development and change. Why do we say so? We say it so because change is imminent. Change is bound to come. Change is required to be there. Everybody buy for change. Everybody works for change. But nevertheless, we also feel that there is resistance to change. In the similar manner, when we talk of development, everybody wishes to have development. Number of people work towards development also. It is a mesmerizing and a soothing term and so on and so forth. So this development and the change which is to be brought forth, that is to be done up through public administration. So that is the second point so far as the significance of public administration is concerned. Third thing we say is that we look at public administration as an instrument for welfare state. Everybody, rich or poor, strong or weak, men and women, children, old, every person is dependent upon the government, looks upon to the government for number of the activities which are to be taken up by the by the government for the welfare of the individual, whether we talk of some special program, whether we talk of some education aspect, whether we talk of the health components and so on. And then also it is a study of the uh, discipline. So when we talk of public administration and try to muster or try to pinpoint its basic points of significance, something which comes into mind is that as we say that it is sociology is a discipline which is known to be the mother of the social sciences. And the public administration, what is public administration? Public administration is something which has taken number of the things from the other disciplines. Like from sociology, which is said to be the mother of the social sciences, public administration has taken uh, the stock of the social groups, the norms, the religion, the, 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 the values and uh, so on and so forth, the culture. That is what public administration has taken from social sciences. When we talk of policies, which are the backbone for the functioning of the system, those policies, when we talk of the policy sciences, that public administration has derived from political science. When we talk of the economic components, when we talk of the GDP and we talk of the role which is being played by the government institutions or by the market forces, that is what public administration has got from economics. When we talk of the mathematical computation of it or the modeling, that public administration has got from mathematics. When we talk of the rules and regulations, when we talk of the laws, when we talk of the acts and the statutes or the ordinances, that public administration has taken from the juridical sciences or from the legal sciences. 
when we talk of the healthcare management or the healthcare system that public administration has taken from from the health sciences when we talk of organization we talk of behavior we talk of uh, um, 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 group norms we talk of leadership that public administration has taken from management or public administration has taken from psychology when we talk of the special components and we say that well it is in this particular part of the world or it is in this particular part of the country that public administration has taken from the geography so what is public administration is public administration culmination of the things which have been taken across from various disciplines so then it means that public administration has nothing of its own could it be somebody can make it in this particular manner but we as students of public administration should try to look at it little differently okay we have taken something from psychology something from sociology something from anthropology something from political science something from management something from uh, um, history something from uh, economics and so on and so forth but see public administration not only performs the day to day functioning or what we call as the routine functioning public administration also takes into consideration what is known as the development administration or the or the development of administration or the administration of development then simultaneously the third aspect which is which is the going to be the topic of our discussion today that public administration gets into being so far as the crisis is concerned that it manages or it administers the crisis and as the present day we are talking of that well there is am fan also so far as the cyclone which has hit the west bengal and odisha coast uh, yesterday or we find it earlier that well we have been uh, confronting this uh, covid 19 for the past uh, little, little two months or so so when this is crisis everything gets subsumed under the crisis so that crisis is managed by the public administration or public administration has a role to play over there so from that particular angle when we look at it we find that well if public administration as a discipline has taken number of things from the very discipline then probably all those disciplines go to the back seat when we find the crisis administration is concerned and public administration becomes the most important so for that matter no other discipline is as useful as public administration is so well i i it is the, the purpose is over here not to offend any political any, any any discipline of studies but for us as students of public administration to appreciate and understand that what public administration is do we really mean that public administration aims at creating a national modus vivendi or mode of life or living style in socio economic political and international relations everything is dependent upon that you know we talk of it earlier also we have submitted on to that that public administration does not exist in a vacuum it exists in a given environment it has an ecology wherein it exists and within that ecology when the moment we try to look at it from various components or various juridical angles we find that that the limit of it keeps on changing from one end to the other end so broadly it is from the socio economic components and it talks into the political and the international relations and it aims at creating or generating a kind of modus vivendi or mode of life or style of living so far as the socio economic political and international relations are concerned certainly to cope with the demands with the needs with with the requirements of the hour public administration cannot remain as it used to be in the earlier time so from that we we say that public administration has to be modern no modern doesn't mean over here anything else but the modern connotes the word modern over here connotes that is something which is up to the date that is something which which does not compromise or which does not take into stock what has been happening in the past so it is not uh, conservatism it is not traditional component of dealing with the thing but it is something which has already been accepted as a part of the functioning culture of the society or the way the people have socialized there upon so public administration is modern and public administration has to be efficient because minus efficiency probably the things will not be we 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 will come on to it when it, i will prove it today that how efficiency has been there so far as indian administration is also concerned and then public administration has to be innovative we have to take into consideration the small bits and pieces that how best we can um, extrapolate it or how best we can manipulate it or how best we can generate the things over there whereby we find that the best comes out of it what is the purpose any person whether individual whether a family 
whether it's uh, the, the sub community, whether a caste or whatever, whatever we talk of it, we find that we all tend to behave in such a manner or work in such a manner whereby we could improve upon our functioning. We can improve upon our performance. And it is, it is an old age saying which says that, well, our competition should not be with anybody else, but our competition should be our, with our own selves. I must try to improve upon whatever I, have, I did yesterday. So every day is a new day for us. Every day is a learning time for us. So based upon our previous experience, we must learn thereupon and we should try to innovate new and new things. That is where it is the creativity which has a role to play. That is where we find that we will be able to get the optimal out of whatever we wish to take it across. In the similar manner, invariably we find that rigidity or inflexibility in functioning, it obstructs the divergent thinking required for dealing with crisis. Crisis is something which is intense danger. The situation about which one is not prepared of, one, one thinks about it but one doesn't know that what would be the gravity or enormity or severity of that particular situation. So when that situation occurs or it gets posed before us, we, we become little, we are taken uh, on the back foot. We do not know how to deal or how to cope with that. So if we will be having rigidity or inflexibility, means if we will not have any flexibility in our approach, or we would say, lakir ke fakir ho ke agar hum chalenge, to shayad is sthiti mein hum karya nahi kar sakte, utni achche tarike se jitna the need of the hour hai. Jitni zarurat hai, shayad utni achche tarah se hum us karya ko nahi kar sakenge. So therefore, what is required is that we have to be little flexible in our thinking. We must be in position to not to get along with whatever has been happening in the past that I will keep on doing whatever has been happening. Think little, little different, out of the box thinking which is known as in the similar manner. We, we must try to focus on the things depending upon that what is the present scenario, what is the given situation and how we should cope thereupon by, by evolving such kind of the mechanisms which serve our purpose. So therefore, introspection is a must to know our weaknesses and vulnerabilities of the system, more so for meeting with the challenges of crisis. We must try to look within ourselves. When we look within ourselves, we find that the number of the things, they, they, they are required to be changed or we, we are tempted to. We, we are allured to bring forth those kind of changes because we feel that, well, this is where I had been. I had been doing this particular task in this given manner. But now I feel that the situation warrants it to be dealt with little differently because in that way, probably I would be able to achieve more onto this. Because why is this so? Because crisis is unpredictable. One doesn't know that how would it be, you know. And once it is unpredictable and when we come across it or we, we, we um, face it, we feel that it puts everything out of gear. Topsy-turvy we become. Upside down it is. It makes everything upside down. Today morning newspaper, when we look at it, when yesterday we were watching the television and tracking this um, 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 journey of M. Fan, one finds it that how people were scared about it and what, what has happened and how much of the loss which has taken place over there. So therefore, but when it puts our, everything out of gear, it threatens our livelihood, it threatens our survival and it threatens our way of life. And if the livelihood is threatened, if the survival is at stake, if the way of life gets jeopardized, then definitely nothing is there. Then, then probably one may have to look at it. Then why did we surrender our sovereignty to the sovereignty of the state? If, if the things are not to be taken care of, if the protection is not to be done up. So for that protection, for taking care of that particular elements whereby the individuals, all of us are, I mean, generations of centuries ago, when we surrendered our sovereignty to the sovereignty of the state, it was for the purpose of protection of our life and property. And we find the instrument of the government doing it, that is in the form of the public administration, which put the things in that order. So more than often, public systems are taken aback with the emergence of the crisis. Now, crisis. What, what is a crisis? Is there something, so the, 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 the fire which has taken place? 
area has been devastated by flood, there has been an earthquake, well, there has been bio uh, component as we find in the form of the COVID, or we find that, well, there is a cyclone, or we find that there is some other natural thing or some other hazard which has taken place over there, or the war which is there among other nations, which is not something as, 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 uh, as it used to be in the earlier days. So from that angle, we find that the public systems are taken aback whenever there is an emergence of crisis. Why public systems are taken aback? Because we are living in one way. जी रहे होते हैं एक रूटीन होता है आदमी का और उस रूटीन के अनुसार ही हम कार्य करते हैं वेन एवर वी फाइंड दैट देयर इज लिटल डिस्टर्बेंस और डेविएशन इन दैट रूटीन दो ऑफ कोर्स द ब्यूटी ऑफ द सिस्टम इज दैट वी 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 मस्ट ट्राई टू कम आउट ऑफ इट एज क्विकली एंड एज अर्ली एज पॉसिबल बट एट टाइम द टेक्स little uh, uh, hiccups also which are the faced across over there because that would again depend upon the enormity of the crisis which we have been uh, faced with or which we have been put uh, before. So therefore it requires different mechanisms to deal with the situation of the crisis. So depending upon the nature and severity of the crisis, public administration has to plan line of action. It is required, it is said that it is required to design such a process which mitigates or lessens the impact of the crisis because crises are not routine events. It is not something because if something is happening, then we become programmed onto it. We are programmed. So it is not programmed, it is, it is non-programmed. We are not used to it. We are used to a life. Exposing the, the kind of the situation which is there and it continues for a good amount of time then probably people will get accustomed onto it. So then under that scenario it will not be a crisis but some way of living which we have taken place, something which is not usual. So it is the unusual component which gets onto it. At time the crisis is of huge quantum and it challenges or scares the administrative system because it puts everything on hold. People are not able to make out that what should be done and how. And on the top of it, you know, as we say that the citizenry, it looks at administration or looks at the government as something whereby the every problem is to be sorted out by the government. In a, in a democratic polity, the way we are, as we are in India, you see, everything, for everything we look at the government. Shortage of something, government is to be held responsible. A small thing, train is get, getting late, a train is running late, but sort of administration do we have? There are window panes of the buses broken and there, there is, we are, we are feeling cold when sitting in the bus during the winter season, what sort of government is it? If there is, there is no electricity for two hours, three hours, what sort of administration is, what sort of government it is? For every small thing to the major thing, for everything, we feel that it is the government which is supposed to, supposed to do it. Now, that is a separate issue. Sometime later we will talk about it. That well, is government in position to do everything without the support of others and who else are, who are the people, those who are to support or give uh, the kind of the, the support I mean, um, helping hand to the government for the performance of that task, that is a separate aspect. We will come on to it a little later. So, the, when we talk of the crisis, we feel that there are times when the crisis is of such huge quantum that it challenges or scares the administrative system because system is not prepared for that. System is not geared for that particular thing because of a number of the factors, you know. At times, it is not, it may not be due to the bankruptcy so far as the as the, the thinking uh, channels of the government is concerned or the thinking pattern of the government is concerned. At times, the individual might be <clears throat> knowing about various things but might be having the, the, the financial constraints or the economic uh, resources uh, constraints that one is not able to do it. So from that angle, we find that it scares the administrative system for not taking it because the crisis of such enormity calls for special attention of the administrative agencies and the actors. <coughs> these, <coughs> sorry, these take the politicians, bureaucracy, market and citizenry by complete surprise because we are not prepared for it. We are living our life, leading our life, suddenly something happens and all lot of whatever we had planned for the period, for that particular period, it comes to a standstill. So we do not know that how we have to go, what we have to do in that particular manner. So 
so we find that it, it takes everything is being taken or being considered by complete surprise. Even when the path to be treaded is unclear, citizens expect public administration to provide all what is required for their life and livelihood. So many problems are there. So many challenges are being faced by the people, those who are performing. We say that government, we say public administration, we say administrative agencies. Kaun hai ye government kya hai? Ye administrative agencies kya hai? Ye public administration kya kaun manage karta hai? I am a citizen, I am having all sort of expectations. But ye jo manage kar rahe hai, wo kaun hai? Wo bhi to meri tarah hai. They are also like me. Have I ever uh, attempted to stand in their shoes and then to look at it? What is important for me, of course, is self. Self-interest is the most important interest. So, okay, I have to protect my interest. But simultaneously, if I have to take the benefit of certain rights, then well, I can do it only when I do, do give adherence to some duties. Uh, rights and duties go simultaneously. Agar kuch na kuch mein samajhta hoon ke ye mera adhikar hai, ye mera right hai, mere ko ye milna chahiye, to mera kuch kartavya bhi hai. Kartavya ko to mein bhool jata hoon. And then when I feel that everything should be done up by the government, government has not done this, government should do this, where, where from government will do? Where from government will do? When, when it comes to pay, making payment of the taxes, at times we find that we, we, we try to make every kind of the uh, design whereby I am able to pay less uh, towards the tax. I mean, there are different segments of the society which are over there. So, one has to look at these things in totality. It cannot be seen in isolation. We cannot break up. We cannot have the tight compartmentalization to see that, well, here I am a citizen. So, well, it is the duty of the government to provide me anything. But well, simultaneously, it is not my duty. That is my thinking. Yeah, it is my right to expect everything from the government, but it is not my duty to contribute towards the functioning of the government. Government cannot function unless and until I perform my task in a way which is required to be performed. Whether it is in the civil services, whether it is in the army, whether it is the paramedic, whether it is the para, 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 paramilitary, whatever, whatever, different segments of the society having various roles to play, they have to perform their role in a given manner. <clears throat> it calls for public administrators to reorganize and sense the crisis, make critical decisions, dealing satisfactorily with the crisis and not only and not only do their best but also seen to having been done the best. Justice should not only be done, it should be seen also that justice has been done so that the people feel satisfied. The satisfaction, element of satisfaction is a must so far as the administration is concerned. Now, when we talk of uh, this public administration in the times of the crisis, what are the challenges which are before us? First thing, first challenge which is there before public administration when we talk of it during the crisis is coming in terms with unexpected event. We had not thought of it that it will happen in this particular way. Any crisis we may talk of. Go back, look at it when it was this 1983 Bhopal gas strategy. Um, look at the other kind of the aspects which have taken place over there. Whichever uh, crisis which has come up, we, we were, nobody is prepared about it. It is an unexpected event which, which gets posed. So, it first challenge which is there before the public administrative agencies is that is coming in terms with unexpected event. Where one is not able to comprehend ni kar sakte ke hum kya hua. Ye kaise ho gaya? Usko sochte sochte ye time kaafi bhi jata and by that time it has, the, the, the harm has already been done. So then, second is enlisting what is to be done. Identifying where it is to be implemented and by whom it is to be executed. Of course, based on thorough assessment. So that is what? That is concerted focus on post call. The acronym which public administration is students are very well aware of. It is planning, organizing, staffing, directing, coordinating, reporting and budgeting. When the, the, the challenge is when the crisis has taken place, it has appeared on the surface. First, we have to come in terms with that unexpected event which has happened. So, then we have to enlist what is to be done. How can I meet with this particular challenge? We have to identify where it is to be implemented, which are the pockets which are affected more, which are the areas which have been affected more, who is to execute it, 
This is to be done up based on thorough assessment. If the assessment would not be there, we will not be able to plot our resources in the manner in which it is required. And once that is not taken care of, we will feel that we will be drawing a flock over there. So likewise, we have to identify required resources. Now, take this example of the of the present crisis which are being faced by the by 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 the Indian administrative system. One is this COVID-19 and the second is this Amphan which has come up yesterday. Let us talk of this COVID-19. Government of India constituted 11 empowered groups under the Disaster Management Act of 2005. These have been constituted for planning and ensuring implementation of COVID-19 activities. Just try to look at it. We say identifying required resources and if we look at the, 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 the composer, this uh, task of these 11 empowered groups which have been constituted, it will make the things clear to us. Ke sare ka sara jo government ka ek structured process tha kaam karne ka, we find that there is a change onto it. Mind you, my dear learners, public administration, we say it is a structured process. It moves in a systematic manner. But when you find that such a big challenge which is being posed before the public administration in India, that everything is uh, probably attached with this and being looked upon from that particular angle, that how this process is being viewed. First group is medical emergency management plan. Second is availability of hospital isolation and quarantine facility. Third is availability of medical equipment. Fourth is augmenting human resources and capacity building. Fifth is supply chain and logistics management. Sixth is coordinating with private sectors, NGOs, international non-governmental organizations. Seventh is economic and welfare measures. Eighth is information, communication and public awareness. Ninth is technology and data management. Tenth is public grievances and suggestions and 11th is strategic strategies issues relating to lockdown. 11 EGOM, the empowered groups of management or some ministries. Now, eight of, uh, the, the nine of these are headed by the secretaries, government of India, different ministries, one by the chairman of uh, vice chairman of Niti Yog, another by the member of the Niti Yog. So, 11 groups as they go. If we look at these 11, we find it that everything probably is to be taken up by these actions. So now these actions have emanated where from? That is by, by identifying or by enlisting what is to be done. Depending upon the situation, depending upon what are the challenges, what are the effects, what are the threats of that particular situation, these things have been identified to be performed by are to be coordinated by the various groups which have been coordinated and then there are the various ministries at the various levels, the very different departments at the various levels which have been assigned the task to perform about it. Now look at the things in the other. This is one situation that is this COVID-19 situation. The other is that when we have, we, we talk about this uh, cyclone which has struck yesterday in this um, uh, coastal area of uh, West Bengal and Odisha. See, what, what is to be done up in a cyclone, what happens? That there is a wind speed of a greater velocity and the water it is uh, having this uh, surges of uh, two meters, one and a half meter and so on and so forth. Over there, as it is in this group, empowered groups, we have seen the various things with regard to the health and with regard to the logistics and with regard to the supplies and so on. So far as the Samphan or the cyclone is concerned, we find that it is identification of vulnerable areas. Which are the areas which are which are uh, to be hit by the cyclone that have to be identified. Identification of cyclone shelters, whether the shelters are there in the good number or not. Arrangements to be made in proper order in the shelter before the cyclone comes because the people have to be evacuated over there. Estimating people needing evacuation, that estimation has to be made. And then the arrangement has to be made that the people are evacuated from the area and they go to the shelter and then the shelter should be the one which has all the facilities so far as the individuals are concerned because they have to live over there. So then evacuation process also requires the transportation facility. Then the food and medicines need to be ensured so far as the cyclone shelters are concerned. 
as the food and medicines are required in the similar manner the the security of the area where from the evacuees have evacuated to the cyclone shelters that also has to be ensured you see you are not only to protect the life of the people you also have to protect the property of the people if protecting the life of the people is the responsibility or the mainstay of the government or public administration in the similar manner protecting the property of the people is also the one of the major tasks of the public administration then we find deployment of the ndrf team which are there 40 ndrf teams were there in west bengal and odisha so far as the yesterday cyclone was concerned arrangements to also take precautions required for covid this is already going on and now another thing which has come up over there so many people have to be transported in which way they should be transported so that well supposing if some person who is being evacuated is uh, covid positive then probably more there will be problematic scenarios so that is to be seen now here whatever the upper three points we have talked of coming in terms of the unexpected event and listing what is to be done identifying where it is to be done and then identifying required resources etc etc if we look at it you know go back to 1999 the odisha super cyclone what happened approximately little short of they say estimate is 9897 people that there was a number of the casualties because the, the, the wind velocity was 260 there was so much of the economic devastation and so on india we weren't prepared probably at that point of time we had only 21 cyclone shelters so far as odisha coastal area is concerned well country started building thereupon and what happened when when in 19 uh, 1999 this thing happened with the casualty number of 9897 this uh, cyclone feline came and uh, 140 km per hour was the speed and the number of casualties was how much 23 9897 number of casualties now 23 lakhs of people were evacuated again it got repeated in this uh, uh, 2019 fani cyclone 185 km speed Number of casualties, 64. Amphan, yesterday, speed was 185. What is the casualty reported so far is 15. Other point is, which one can talk about? And again, if somebody is to look at it only from the, from the gray area, or the um, um, gray concern of the government, one could point it out. Well, loss to hoi gaya na, economic loss to hoi gaya. Aray, agar Jan ki kima shayad zyada economic loss. Economy is required. Nobody, nobody says, nobody shuts eye onto economy. But then definitely jan ki kima zyada. Human life is to be given more protection. And similarly, the livestock also which is taken care of so far as these evacuation measures are concerned. So this brings to forth that the functioning of the government, it public administration takes up a change. Change in a big way. See, till two days ago, today is 21st, up to 18th, 17th, 18th, if we look into, the state administration in West Bengal and in Odisha and the ministry at the government of India level, because it is the home ministry, which is the nodal ministry so far as the natural disasters is concerned, they were concerned not about Amphon but they were concerned about COVID-19. Now, well, it doesn't mean that now the concern has shifted from COVID-19 to M1. No, it is which has been taken simultaneous to that. And look at the people, those who were giving all attention, all resources, everything was gearing towards it that how we can contain the spread of COVID-19. Simultaneously, we are confronted with another challenge or the other crisis. So, well, it speaks of it and speaks volumes of it so far as Indian administration or public administration in India is concerned that so many people in the number of lakhs that too under the situation which is COVID-19 going on that so many people have been evacuated and the casualties reported after it stuck yesterday in the morning news, I heard it, it is reported to be 15, 12 plus 3, 12 in West Bank, all 3, 27. Well, the number may rise uh, in a day or so to maybe 20, 25, God forbid that it comes down to that. So that shows or that speaks of it that when government gets into gear, 
to deal with the crisis administration and we find that those structures which we have put in place, those structures get changed. So that element of rigidity or inflexibility which was being talked about, that element of rigidity and flexibility is not being emphasized upon, not being taken care of and in place there is this flexibility or lack of the rigidity which gets into being for the things to be taken up in the, in the given manner. Now, what is to be ensured? It is to ensure that public personnel don't have the following because ultimately good administration, effective administration, modern administration, innovative administration, efficient administration is to be done by whom? Is to be done by the individuals. And it is not only a given uh, department, it is not only a given organization, it is plethora of the organizations which are involved therein. Do, let us, let us try to look at it. Do we mean to say that it is only the hospital or the law and order agencies which are involved so far as the management of COVID or the post-COVID scenario when we have started opening up the lockdowns and all that? Are they only the ones which are concerned about it? Take the example, what about education? Sea changes which are taken place over there. This, this university of yours, Indira Gandhi National Open University, yesterday at 4 o'clock, the union HRD minister inaugurated seven courses to be put on by IGNU online. And in the similar manner, the vice chancellor and the other in the university are functioning that we could have online courses. So this is only one example. Likewise, number of the other things are being taken up, whether it is in the field of education, whether it is in the field of welfare, whether it is in the field of agriculture, number of the steps are being taken up for ensuring to cope up with the situation which has been created due to, due to, the, due to this crisis. So from that end, the personnel which are involved over there from the public administration point of view, they don't have to have hopelessness. So hope sustains life. If we become hopeless, uh, then definitely everything would come to an end. We will not be able to do anything. Right? And then we, we should not have, the people should not have poor concentration. Rather, they should have very sharp concentration. They, they, should, they should focus on what is required to be done up under a given situation. And when we think about it, definitely we will be able to get the maximum uh, mileage out of that also. Irritatability should be done away with. We should not get irritated. Rather, we should try to be as rational as one could be. Of course, at times it so feels that, well, it is easy to say about it and it is very difficult to put it in practice. So, well, there may be some kind of gap thereupon, but nevertheless, it, it should not be made as a part of the routine to function in that particular manner because these are the points which if you look at it, crisis or no crisis, even if it is a very, everything is going on in a hunky-dory manner, if we look at it and we look at these points, probably one finds it that in nobody's life, these points should find a place. Like this hopelessness, poor concentration, irritability and the conflicts with others. Well, 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 why should I be at conflict with the other? So, well, in the other sense, uh, if we, uh, from the other perspective, when one looks at it, that if these are the points that are written here, if these are the points that are written here, then we are going to the same way of the moksh. When I don't have any trouble with anyone, I don't have any idea that 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 I don't have any idea. We will not have such kind of social situation which will put us on the conflicting and so we will, because we will avoid social situations. We will do away with anger. Well, easy said, easy saying than doing it. Uh, doing away with anger. Well, how easy it is. We will, we will not get uh, aggrieved about it. We will not have denial. The personnel will not have difficulty in eating or sleeping because they will be able to cope with it. They should not be apathetic. They should not be depressed. They shouldn't have anxiety. These are the points. And then likewise, another point during the crisis, the challenge or the action to be taken up by administration is the deployment of the officials for round the clock functioning. Because it doesn't uh, mean that, well, you can, you are supposed to work only till this and this time. Let us say, we, we can't say it is from 9.30 to 6 with half, a, half an hour break for lunch during the day. No, well, after, after 6 o'clock, there won't be any corona. If it is 6 o'clock post, then M fun will not have any effect. Well, things do not happen in that particular given manner. So we have to think of working or deploying the officials in a manner that the round-the-clock functioning is not jeopardized or is not affected. 
than identifying possible helping hands from non-governmental sources. Everything may not be possible for the government. Government or its uh, officials or its sources to be taken care of. So there has to be the non-governmental sources which, which, must be, which must be geared up for the purpose of uh, taking up the task in that manner. Then the hospital management or the health crisis management at the grassroots, which, which requires to be there in the big way, because minus that, again, it becomes very difficult. Now, just I would like to say it, if we look at it, you see, <clears throat> Epidemic Disease Act 1897, passed by Britishers, whereby our things are going upon. And so far as this seventh schedule is concerned, health administration or health component or health as a subject, it comes under the under the under the state list so the government of india is not having that kind of um, authority or power to make the thing but and this uh, this your um, uh, epidemic disease act 1897 it also does not support that so then what happened on 20th of april 2020 an ordinance was promulgated to to give the powers to the government of india to the union minister to take up union ministry or the union government to take up the steps so far as which are required for the performance of the health issues or the crisis because COVID-19 is all dealing with health and hospital. In the similar manner, when we talk of disaster management, disaster management is a state subject. But today also there was a news when the chief minister of a given state which has been affected has made a statement that well this uh, disaster has taken place so we look towards government of india or the union government for uh, help and uh, assistance to be provided so when all said and done it is not to be we cannot see it in a, in a, in a watertight compartmentalized manner but we have to see it and plan the things in such a way that it is able to take care or take cognizance of the thing. So that has given the government of India, the union government, this, this uh, ordinance which was promulgated on 20th day of uh, April 2020, the power to take up the hospital administration or the co co coordination on the health issues so far as the to all the states are concerned. And when we talk of it, the uh, grassroots level, Anganwadi workers have they not worked? They have worked in a big way. As the Aganwadi workers have worked in a similar manner, this ASHA, accredited social health activists, they have performed the thing. Auxiliary uh, nurse midwives, they have performed the thing. Doctors definitely have performed the thing. So other paramedics also in the hospitals have performed the thing. So that is where various components get integrated for the performance of it. Various isolation centers have been made, quarantine places have been identified and performed. So that is what is again a challenge and an action point so far as the public administration during crisis is concerned. In the similar manner, it is a public distribution system to function without uh, any laxities or doing away with the laid down norms so that people are able to get whatever they wish to take for, for, for the basic subsistence. Jine ke liye jo kuch chahiye, jo mahiya hona chahiye, wo unko karwana jana chahiye. Similarly, there would be a chaos if there is no law and order. So law and order is to be managed, it is to be maintained. Police has played a very effective role all across the country. Though police again, when we talk of law and order administration, law and order is a subject so far as the state list is concerned. But the Ministry of Home Affairs and the other agencies at the government of India level, they are coordinating it with the DGPs, the, this uh, um, 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 Home Secretary keeps on talking to the Chief Secretary and the Director General of Police at the state level for the purpose of ensuring that there is this traffic management in a given state. We find it that, well, the PMO has uh, given functions to the various union ministers to coordinate with the states for various kind of the things to be taken up. It does not mean that it is at the, at the cost of the central state relation. It does not mean that the, that the union administration or the union government is functioning in such a manner that the state administration or the state government's uh, autonomy is being uh, put to stick. No, it is not like that. It is in a manner that there is something which the public administration is in India is to perform. That as a student of public administration, we should appreciate and we should try to understand it, that this is how the administration gets one. Though there are some kind of the thing, arrangements which have been made, but those arrangements are so far as the normal functioning is concerned. Jab thoda 
लीक से हट के कोई हमारे सामने कोई चुनौती आती है तो उस चुनौती से डील करने के लिए हमें उसके तरीके भी उसी के अनुसार ही ढूंढने पड़ेंगे और उन्हीं के अनुसार ही उसको एक्शन में लाना पड़ेगा विच इज़ द रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ द डे एंड वी आर एबल टू डू इट देन इट इज़ नॉट इट डजेंट गेट फिनिश देयर ओनली वी हैव टू साइमल्टेनियसली हैव द मॉनिटरिंग ऑल्सो बिकॉज विदाउट मॉनिटरिंग वी विल गो टॉप सिट अवे वो विल नॉट बी एबल टू हैव द प्रॉपर स्टॉक ऑफ और जितना कुछ हमने अभी पहले ऊपर जितने पॉइंट में बोला वो सारे का सारा खत्म हो जाएगा इफ दी प्रॉपर मॉनिटरिंग इज नॉट देयर बिकॉज दैट मॉनिटरिंग विल लेट अस नो दैट हाउ मच वी हैव टू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट फॉर दैट पर्टिकुलर फॉर फॉर अरेस्टिंग द प्रॉब्लम विच हैज सरफेस बिफोर अस एंड आर फंक्शनिंग शुड ऑल्सो बी पीपल ओरिएंटेड इट शुड बी सेंसिटिव इट शुड बी इट शुड बी एम्पथेटिक we we should try to consider those who are performing the task they should try to consider that this is a service which we are providing right i repeat it those who are providing the service should do it in a manner that it is a service which they are providing and they are not obliging any person but then if they are doing something for me as as a person who is getting the attention of the service provider then it is all the more my duty my role responsibility to make sure that i don't put the person who is putting his life on the at stake for providing me some benefit out of it that i should stand in the way of his functioning so it has to be where we have to function along with each other all said and done the responsive administration and behavior is a challenge so far as such kind of the crisis is concerned and is also an action point so far as dealing with this is concerned working hand in gloves with citizenry and other non governmental organization is again a must is again a must so far as performance of the things in that given manner is concerned so why we have to look into it how much right we have to look into it in a manner that we perform the things in such a way that whatever is required to be achieved that is being achieved in a manner which satisfies the need of the hours and whereby we do not get affected by 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 the crisis which has been put before us what is required is that we have to manage the finances there has to be focus on team building approach for all activities at all levels right media briefing strategies is again a challenge which has to be focused across by the people for performance of the things <clears throat> coordinating with other levels of the government whether it is state it is district it is block level it is village level it is intergovernmental relationship that needs to be done learning from day to day functioning and ushering in improvements as felt this is again something which needs to be done what is required is building trust between the central state and local level administration you know we find that prime minister office is formally in saddle and it has assigned individual states to all union ministers they get daily reports bypassing the lengthy state to center channels which was which is the routine way of doing the things so that has been done away with the respective ministers coordinate with all the district magistrates subordinate police or senior subordinate police the chief medical officers of the state and at the district levels on daily basis regarding measures taken to contain the spread of covid-19 and likewise with regard to this now 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 with the the, the mha is doing it or ndma is doing it in a way with regard to this amphan which has uh, struck in uh, west bengal and odisha yesterday again the other crisis that is this covid 19 quarantine facilities and lockdown related problems and report backs to the pm so this is how this is the trust between the central state and the local level administration which has been attempted to be put in place at times one finds it that well it is not happening or there are there is some dissatisfaction which is there no dissatisfaction will always be there we are we are viewing it as a student of administration we are we are not Uh, critically analyzing what is the public administration and you know we were not talk, we are talking of public administration during crisis public administration during crisis is the norms which are there the procedure which is there and the norms and procedure are little different why little it is 
too much of difference is there so far as the, the routine administration uh, tasks and procedures are concerned and so far as the crisis administration procedures are concerned. What is the need of the R or the challenge which is being over there is that a gap gets created between what? Between the expectations of the citizens and the performance of the government. What is the expectation? My expectation as a citizen is that Aaj ka din, 21 May 2020 khatam hone se pehle, Surya ast hone se pehle, COVID-19 namak koi bhi problem Hindustan mein na hai. Aur agar mere saath koi hai, to wo to shat prati shat khatam ho jai. Nahi ho sakta. One has to look at the things in a pragmatic manner. Wishful thinking will not do the work. So, it is again, I co had been correlating it that, well, if I wish to, if I wish to desire, I should desire, right? And then I should deserve. There has to be a miss, there has to be a match between what you desire and what you deserve. Desire, to jo marji karte ho, deserve kya? Wo deserve karte ho kya? Kya mere mein wo khasiyat hai, mere mein wo kabiliyat hai, ke main desire hi karta raho, ke mere ko ye cheez mil jani chahiye. I should try to look at it that whether I deserve it or not. So in the similar manner, this gap which gets created between the expectations of the citizens and between the performance of uh, the government action, that needs to be abridged by whichsoever way, whether it is uh, through through ward committees, it is through local uh, people, local volunteers and so on, but this gap should be, should, should, should be, should be uh, abridged. The digital apps, like we find that there is Arogya Setu and there are four or five more which has been come up over there. It is again to keep the citizens informed and digital tools are enabled for the public part, better public participation so that in the event of the crisis, the people are able to get maximum support and help from the people, from, from the government. See, it is not, one, one is not uh, focusing, it is COVID-19 is only a point of illustration over here. In the similar manner, we find that if we talk of the cyclone, that that is a point of reference which we have before us. And we find that the role of the community in both the scenarios is very imminent. It is very pertinent. It is very prominent. Minus community, probably it is not possible for the administration to function in that given manner. And then we, we must, uh, there, there should be debunking misinformation and dissemination online because this rumor mongering, wrong information to be provided to the people, that should not be the point and that should be done away with. So this is what we, I attempted to discuss with you in today's uh, talk about uh, uh, public administration uh, during crisis. I, I hope that the points have been made uh, and probably you are able to understand it. Maybe in the times to come, sometime when we get an opportunity, we will dwell it further upon. Thank you very much.